Hello, this is John Grimes, Ohio State University Extension Beef Coordinator, visiting with you today on the topic of determining pregnancy status of beef cattle. When discussing the traits of importance in beef cattle, it would be very hard to argue that any trait is more important than reproduction. Simply put, growth, carcass, or maternal traits mean very little if the female doesn't conceive and deliver a live calf. Regardless if you're using a herd bull or artificial insemination in your herd, high conception rates are of the utmost importance. Why should we want to know the pregnancy status of females in the herd? By identifying open females, we can call them from the herd to put selection pressure against poor reproductive performance. Another important reason would be to call open females in times of feed shortages such as we are experiencing in Ohio in 2012. Palpation can help determine an approximate calving date for females bred under natural service, and palpation can also help provide an indication of possible reproduction problems in the herd and get a quicker start on corrective measures. Regardless if the producer is utilizing a natural service or artificial insemination program, not every female will become pregnant during the breeding season. Superior reproductive performance of 95% or more conception rates is an excellent goal to shoot for, but often not obtained. There are several reasons why we experience lower pregnancy rates. They can include poor bull fertility, poor body condition of the females at four body condition score or less, poor forage quality and or quantity, reproductive diseases, environmental stress, and many other reasons. There are appropriate times when we can utilize technology to determine pregnancy status. Through traditional rectal palpation, usually we need 35 to 40 days post breeding to make an accurate determination. With ultrasound, we can do it a bit shorter at 25 to 30 days, and blood testing in a similar time frame of 28 to 30 days post breeding. Of course, we can always wait until they calve to determine the ultimate breeding status, but this is not an efficient use of resources. USDA's National Animal Health Monitoring System beef study from 2007 and 2008 showed us the percentage of operations using palpation. As you can see from this slide, as cow herd size increased, the number of operations using palpation increased as well, with an overall average of herds using palpation at 18%. In this same study, producers were asked for their reasons for not using palpation. The number one reason given for not using palpation was labor, followed second by cost. Other reasons were given including the practice being too difficult or complicated, a lack of facilities, and several other reasons were listed. An experienced veterinarian should be able to diagnose pregnancy through traditional palpation methods at 35 to 40 days post breeding. An efficient ultrasound technician with modern equipment should be able to diagnose pregnancy status at 25 to 30 days post breeding. If the breeding date is known and determination of the sex of the fetus is desired, this needs to be done in the 60 to 90 day range post breeding. Current technology also allows us to draw blood samples at 28 to 30 days post breeding to determine pregnancy status. Currently, there are three different tests on the market available to beef producers at a cost of three to four dollars per head, and these tests have proven very accurate in diagnosing both open and pregnant females. To use this technology, simply draw two to three milliliters of blood from the tail or neck of the animal and put the blood in a numbered sealed tube for shipment. Once the blood has been shipped to a diagnostic lab, it takes approximately two to three days to generate a report of results. This slide shows an example of a typical report from a blood testing lab for pregnancy. Pregnancy diagnosis is an important management tool that should be utilized by every beef producer. By identifying open females or other problem breeders, we can call them from the herd. By placing high standards on reproduction, we will eventually raise the reproductive performance of the herd over time. 
Culling open females from the herd during times of feed shortages and high feed prices can certainly help to improve the bottom line. For more information on this subject or many other beef related topics, go to the Ohio State University Extension Beef Team's website at beef.osu.edu.